Yogurt has been around ever since animals were first domesticated in Mesopotamia oh, around 7,000 years ago. And uh, that's when naturally occurring bacteria of the lactobacillus uh, species drifted into warm milk and thickened it. Enzymes uh, produced by the bacteria convert uh, lactose, that's the sugar found in milk, uh, into lactic acid. And lactic acid uh, then causes proteins in the milk to precipitate, and that causes the thickening of the texture. Not only did people find that the uh, sour taste of the acid uh, was appealing, they also discovered that the fermented milk lasted longer. Now we know that lactic acid prevents the growth of bacteria that can cause spoilage. The ancient Greeks and Romans took to yogurt, and uh, so did apparently Genghis Khan, who fed yogurt made from mare's milk to his army. It was likely wandering Turks who introduced yogurt to Europe, where it became a staple in the Balkans. Entry into the world of health foods occurred when future Nobel laureate Elie Metchnikoff hypothesized, without evidence, that the supposed longevity of Bulgarian peasants was due to their frequent consumption of yogurt. On a visit to Metchnikoff's lab in Paris, Dr. John Harvey Kellogg, of cereal fame, saw a picture of yogurt on Metchnikoff's desk, and when asked about it, was informed of its potential benefits. He took this to heart, and on his return to the sanitarium that he had founded in Battle Creek, Michigan, he began using it as a form of treatment. Kellogg encouraged the consumption of yogurt, but believed that its most effective use was as an enema. Metchnikoff's suggestions about the health benefits of yogurt pretty well flew under the radar until the 1990s, when research blossomed about the bacteria that inhabit our gut, the microbiome. It turns out that these microbes are not just uh, inactive bystanders, but can affect our physiology. This is exemplified by a recent study by Harvard researchers that scrutinized dietary data and cancer statistics collected over years from some 150,000 health professionals. Just over a thousand colon cases were identified in which tumors had been analyzed for the presence of bacteria. Bifidobacteria were absent in about twice as many tumors as in ones where they were present, which led the researchers to conclude that these bacteria offered protection against colon tumors. They further suggested that this protection was linked to consuming more than two servings of yogurt a week. As can be expected, this generated a lot of media attention. What was mostly left out of the coverage, however, was that there were no statistically significant associations between long-term yogurt intake and overall colorectal cancer incidence. So bifidobacteria may reduce the risk of some tumors, but not the overall risk of colorectal cancer, which of course is what we are really interested in. Furthermore, not all yogurts contain bifidobacteria. They're all made with some form of lactobacillus, but only some producers add bifidobacteria. There's also the question of how many of the live bacteria are actually contained in the product and how many make it to the gut. If yogurt really increases longevity, as Mechnikov insinuated, it is not by preventing colon cancer. And that for today is our Cup of Joe.